now it's J cubed and Tristan to the first. Woo! Never listen the first, baby! Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. In the past, I've always talked about my weakness being, uh... <laughs> cars, and uh, if you went to the high school talent show, you saw my uh, joke about what I do when the car is not working. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> this is not expected. <laughs> Need some water. We didn't plan this out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't mess up my note card. <coughs> this is part of the act. That joke at the talent show was a shortened version. If you don't mind, I'd like to share the full joke with you now. Everyone has a weakness. Even me. Can't be perfect every day. Mine happens to be cars. I don't know anything about automobiles. Actually, the other day I was driving down the road and smoke started coming out of a hood. I got up and I changed the tire. When it was all said and done, nothing was working, so I took a step back and assessed the situation, and it hit me. I changed the wrong tire. <laughs> I ended up changing all four tires before I finally got on my phone and called AARP, or whatever. <laughs> and they told me to pull out the gasket. So I went into the hood and I took out the air filter. I'm not that dumb, I know what that is. That's the one that starts the car. <laughs> Yes, thank you, thank you. That was original, thank you. Now I'm gonna start being funny. Upon further analyzation of what my real weakness is, I figured out that my true weakness is uh, the opposite sex. Girls. Females. Chicks, babes, gals. I was just looking at one person the whole time as I was saying this. And this is due entirely to the fact that I'm an expert in the so-called friend zone. Yeah, I said it. I know it's taboo, as Miss Johnson would say. But here's the skinny. <laughs> So good at getting into the friend zone, what I do is I find it, I dig a hole, put myself in the hole, bury the dirt on top of me. That's a metaphor, I don't really do that. On several occasions, I have trekked out into the cold, harsh weather of the zone of friends, built an ice castle with my friendly powers, locked myself in the ice castle so that people won't come find me. And what's more is girls will actually try and come and try to help me out of the friend zone. They'll break into the castle and try to have me leave. And then I shoot ice powers at them until they go. And they're like, hey Jake, isn't it cold out here? And I'm like, the cold never bothered me anyway. <laughs> and then when they leave, and I'm wallowing in self-pity, I realize I don't have to be sad. All I have to do is let it go. 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 So I'm in the friend zone. <laughs> Here, here's some advice on getting out of the friend zone. Don't take advice from me on getting out of the friend zone. <laughs> Let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about. The other day, a girl came up to me and put her arms out in proper hug form. She is thrusting herself at me. I've done nothing to get her to come do this. And what do I do? I come back with two high fives. <laughs> That's my real underlying problem. I don't know when to stop being funny. I don't know where to draw that line. Example two, i.e. When I was in eighth grade, which by the way was the last time I had a girlfriend, so essentially I've never had a girlfriend. <laughs> we hugged like three times and only saw each other at school. I was gonna go ask this girl out, which back then means let's walk to each other's classes together and have people call our names simultaneously. So I'm building up to this for two weeks. We keep talking about it. I'm like, 
I'm texting her, I'm like, if I asked you how would you say yes? And she's like, yes. And it still takes me two weeks to finally ask her. So we're walking down the stairs, and I look at her. This is when it's time to start getting serious. I look at her and I'm like, hey, hey. I have a question for you. What shampoo do you use in your hair? And then I walked away really fast. Let's just say, let's just say she gave up on me and went out with Danny Logan. That story is 100% true. No one ever told me where that fine line was between the appropriate time to be serious and the appropriate time to be funny. For me, it's all the appropriate time to be funny. I probably wouldn't be a virgin if I knew where that line was. A few months ago, I got a girl in the bedroom. Hey. Good joke. And she starts taking off her clothes. And you know girls, they get self-conscious. They're like, oh, I don't want you to look at my body. So she turns the lights off. Just some advice that I figured out later. This is when you're supposed to start getting serious. That's where you draw the line. <laughs> no one told me that. So right as the lights come off, I start imitating Bane from the Dark Knight Rises. Uh, the darkness is your eyes. <laughs> you're going to adopt in the dark. Where'd you go? <laughs> That story is not true. I've never gotten a girl in the bedroom. <laughs> Another problem I have is simply talking to girls. I don't know how to ask them out. Um, a couple weeks ago, there was a girl that I wanted to ask out. She was talking to her friend and one of my friends, and she's kind of sideways, like not looking at me. And I should have gotten her attention first, but what I did is I just went for it because I had been planning it out for like the last month. And I'm like, hey, what are you doing after school? And she looks at me and she's like, what? And then I'm like, I freaked out. I was like, I was talking to him. <laughs> and then I walked away really fast. What's the say she gave up on me and went out with Danny Logan. <laughs> But there are times when I am successful in asking a girl out. Winter Formal 2013. It was Kayla Olson in history class. I think her boyfriend's here tonight, so this is gonna get weird. <laughs> That's really all the information you need to know that this was not a romantic proposal. There was no photographers or fireworks or confidence or any of that. <laughs> She's sitting behind me, and this is exactly how I ask her. Thank you. Hold the applause. <laughs> Two days later, hours before the dance, I got the text. A lot of you may know it. We're just going as friends, right? <laughs> yeah, I could have. I could have responded with, "No, I fully intended on taking this to the next level post dance." Or I could have even just said, "No." Well, what did I say? Yeah. <laughs> you knew, smiley face. <laughs> As I'm typing it, I'm crying. <laughs> smiley face. <laughs> but there was one, count my finger, one time, where I did succeed in making it past the phase of asking a girl out. 
into the date phase. This joke gets kind of weird, so I'm not going to use any real names. We'll just call her um, Brittany Lapajinsky. Um, <laughs> This took place before either of, us, either of us had cars, so my mom dropped me off, and I went and bought the tickets, because I'm a man, you know, a white American man. <laughs> she pulls up in her uh, blue minivan with a, uh, a Jesus sticker on the front, and the license plate says, I owe you one God. <laughs> That's it. That's all I have to say about that. So I make the right move, I go up, I introduce myself to her mom, Tiffany. I'm doing everything right up to this point, according to the movies. You know, that with the lady and the gentleman, mostly in the 50s. Hold on. So we already have the tickets. She has some money, and she tries to give it to me. So we play that game. Oh, I can't possibly accept that from you. She's like, oh, you're going to take this. And I'm like, no. She's like, you're, yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we get into the movie theater. I'm playing by the rule book. We sit in the back. <laughs> And uh, this is where I fall off. Right as we sit down, I put the armrest down. <laughs> this is bad for two reasons. One, nothing is going to happen on this evening in the back of a dark theater. Dark theater. And two, the entire movie, I'm trying to come up with a reason to put it back up. So I don't even remember what movie we watched. <laughs> oh, by the way, Miss Fuentes is here tonight. <laughs> I know that was a weird part to give you a shout out, but uh... <laughs> Eventually the movie comes over, and uh, I'm starting to freak out, because I haven't made a move at all, and uh, I didn't want to know that I'd wasted eight dollars. <laughs> so we're sitting outside, it, it's like, I think it was, uh, it's like half an hour before mom was supposed to show up. So we're sitting on the planter outside of Movies Havasu, she's sitting six feet away from me. I'm sitting here, I'm trying I'm struggling to come up with small talk. Hey, look at that car. I bet it costs a lot of money. <laughs> Eventually we just I sorry. I asked her if she wants to go to Arby's. I can't hear anything right now. I asked her if she wants to go to Arby's. She's like, yeah, I'll go, but I'm not hungry, so I'm not getting anything. And I was like, alright. So we start walking there, and we're not walking like a couple on a date. We're walking like two people that are just going to our next class at school, and we don't know each other. We're walking, we walked all the way around through the parking lot, and I don't know why, but we, there was like an 18 foot gap at one point between us. We're like walking around planters and cars not talking to each other. We get to Arby's, we sit down, and I'm like, this is already awkward enough, I don't want to eat food in front of her. So we sit there for like a little while, just doing that awkward laugh when you don't know what to say. <laughs> that, that went on for like six minutes and then we finally walked back to the movie theater. And uh, she said her mom was back, so we gotta go back. As we're walking up, I see the blue van with the Jesus sticker. And I'm, I just go for it. I'm like, all right, I'm gonna do any, whatever I can right now. At this point, all I'm worth is a hug. So I put my arms out in proper hug form, and what does she do? Two high fives, and then gets in her van and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, she freaked out, because if her mom had seen her touching a boy, she would have gotten in a lot of trouble. And that is the story of the only date I have ever gone on. <laughs> and it's not just uh, it's not just dating or talking to girls. I have problems texting them. <sighs> yeah. I can't even do the one thing where all you have to do is send a message and then not look at your phone for a while. 
and don't have to look at her reaction. There's this one girl, Megan Lowry, Skills USA. She, I thought she was cute, so I was gonna get her number. I happened to know her brother, so I texted him and I was like, hey, can I have your sister's number? And then I realized, that doesn't sound good. Especially when her sister is a freshman, or his sister is a freshman. So I needed to come up with a reason on the spot. So I was like, hey, can I have your sister's number? She has my calculator. <laughs> Apparently that was a good reason, because he gave it to me. <laughs> now this is where I show you guys how I can't text. The first message that I send her is, oh, I'm reading the conversation, by the way. I'm not, like, texting people. What room are you staying in? That's it. I just said that. Which, it made sense at the time, because when you're in the hotels, you can dial a room number, and it calls that room. And it, she didn't know that, so her response is, who is this? Which is a valid response. <laughs> and then I try to like save it and come up with a good reason to say that, so I'm like, I'm an advisor, what's your room number? She doesn't respond for 25 minutes. <laughs> So I, come, I say, okay, I'm not an advisor. And then she says, then who is it? I'm not just gonna tell where I'm sleeping. This is when I should start being serious and tell her who it is. Nope. <laughs> I'm your worst nightmare. <laughs> this is how I get girls. <laughs> and then she said, okay, I'll dream about you now. Ha, uh, good night. <laughs> and then I said, or you may know me as Jake Holmes. And that was the last time I ever texted Megan Lowry. <laughs> or talked to her. <laughs> I, I didn't get her permission to do that joke either. <laughs> Alright, I have one last story before I go. I call this story, The First Time Buying Condoms. Oh, by the way, my grandparents are also here tonight. <laughs> right in Miss Fuentes' face. <laughs> Alright, this, this story took place back when I first started driving and I was on a caffeine kick because I just discovered that it can make you better at everything. So I went to Kmart at 9.30 at night to buy five hour energies. I didn't know I was gonna be buying condoms that night. I go into the store, there's no one in there except for one register open. I walk straight over to the pharmaceuticals because that's where the five hours are. And as I'm browsing, out of the corner of my eye, I see a collection of colorful boxes <laughs> singing to me. <laughs> Children. I didn't get those ones. <laughs> so, I look, and then I instantly look away and go to the next aisle, because I get scared. Because even though there's no one in the store, well, there's two reasons I walked away. Number one, I'm on a mission, five hour energies. And number two, I have this irrational fear that someone's gonna see me looking at them, I'm gonna be labeled as a pervert, I'm gonna get taken to jail, and then I'm gonna be on the sex offender list for the rest of my life just for staring too long. <laughs> there was one person in the store. <laughs> All right. So I get, I get the five hours, I grab a six pack, I start to walk back to the register. As I'm walking back, I realize this is probably the only time that I'll be in Kmart with just one person that I have to deal with. So, I make the quick split decision, go back, don't look for too long, but I grab the first box I see, and I head back to the counter. <laughs> Set the things on the conveyor belt, I'm looking down, because I don't want to talk to the lady at the thing. I'm starting to pull out my money, and I like, her name tag catches my eye. Tiffany Lopajinski. <laughs> I 
I, I look, and the first thing I do, oh god. I'm suddenly really interested in what's on this side. She like tells me the price, I throw a 20. I'm like, have a good night, and I just grab my things, I don't even get the change, I just walk away. I can honestly say, I doubt there's anyone in here that has a worse story about the first time they bought condoms than I do. Thank you. God bless America, and follow me on Twitter.